from different areas around the nation and give us a report of two minutes telling us what is going on in your area. Are you doing something that's particularly interesting or have you seen something spectacular that you need to share with everyone around the world? First of all, I'm going to read you a letter that we received from Jim Fiddler in Newfoundland. There's some exciting things going on up there. And Jim, I certainly congratulate you for getting this all together. Jim writes, Dear Bill and Carolyn, I'm writing you this letter to tell you some very good news. At 11 a.m. on Friday, January 14th, 1994, the hour of the time will debut on CH. MRFM in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada, the oldest city in North America where Marconi received the first wireless radio signal just after the turn of the century. Not only does this mean that people can receive these broadcasts clearly on FM, but as well this station is fed into the homes directly via cable. We are Americans here, North Americans, and have as much need for the truth as anybody else. At this time, through the closure of the Atlantic fisheries, the commencement of a large-scale project to extract oil from the seabed offshore, the proposal of a huge incinerator to burn garbage shipped here from the United States, and I believe from elsewhere eventually, and many other disturbing things, we are in a state of socio-economic turmoil. We stand to lose what little we have, not only already lost through politics and manipulation of the people. In 1949, an economically struggling Newfoundland was led into a confederation with Canada through the promise of old age pensions, baby bonuses, welfare, and so forth. Less than 51% of the people voted in favor of this confederation, and it is believed that a significant number of these votes were tampered with. So you see, we have the problems right from the start. I hope this program can help open a few eyes and ears around here. I feel the sheeple factor on the island is extreme. There are two basic groups of people. One, the people that believe everything they see on the news, the plugged-in apathetic, and the people who smelled the sour milk a long, long time ago and don't even bother anymore, the unplugged apathetic. In the meantime, I wish you, Carolyn and Bill, and all your listeners all the best. Jim Fiddler. Now, this broadcast is going to be on CHMR FM 93.5, cable 103.7, and it may be live in the future. He's working on a fundraising for getting in more equipment so that the uh, reception would be good enough to broadcast live to his area. Jim, I wish you lots and lots of luck. And remember, everyone out there, this started last Friday on January 14th at 11 a.m. in the morning. He started with the first debut tape that Bill Cooper made. Now, while all of you are out there thinking of the two-minute report that you're going to be giving, I'm just going to re read something from the strategic investment of January 19th, 1994. Something about concealed weapons. This is from Behind the Lines by Jack Wheeler. Congressman Dana 
Rora Barker, Republican of California, will soon offer legislation giving law-abiding citizens the right to carry concealed weapons. Florida citizens now have this right. Any resident not convicted of a felony may receive a concealed weapon permit, and crime against them is down 30 percent, and thus up against tourists whom the criminal knows aren't armed. The criminal won't assault someone who might put a 38 in his face and blow him away. We're going to open the lines in just a moment, and and meantime, we'll hear just a piece of music that will help to share the idea of your calling in and reporting in your area, how you're doing it your way. That's great. And we're all attempting. We're going to try to have Bill come up here. Uh oh. Uh, hopefully, you know, in, um, when the when the weather clears. Right. That's what you're all thinking about right now. So huh? we're we're going to try to work on that. So of course we'll be in contact with you pertaining to that. Well, uh, Bill is at home right now listening, and I'm sure he's kind of surprised. Um, he, uh, as you know, can't be with us. But um, that's a really nice first call to hear that at home. Yeah, well, you know, I, at one point there you had said that you didn't hear much from this part of the country, but now that we get you at 8 o'clock, you know, the program here at 8, midnight is kind of hard. Right. I hope Swiss America Trading staff are hearing that and uh, realizing how appreciative you all are out there. That's really great. Yeah. How did you all meet? Uh, well, we met on, uh, when we went to Washington for the... Um, Project 93. I see. So we met on a bus, you know, going down there. We've been in contact since. And it's, um, you know, they're all just really great people, great patriots, and all, you know, working for the same reason. And uh, also the Gannett um, stuff is trying to advertise that a bit, too, you know, get that news out. Well, that's good. Thanks for calling in, Pat. Okay, well, I'm sorry about Bill being sick. I hope he feels better. Okay. And, and if my two minutes is up, right? Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Pat. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, let's hear from somebody else. That's good to start off with somebody from New England. Here we go. Hello, you're on the air. I'm on the air. Hi. Right. Oh, excellent. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from um, Los Angeles, Hardo Earthquake City. Oh, good. We hope to hear from you. Um, uh, this is White Rook. I'm not going to give my real name. I'm a patriot. I'm a commander of uh, a small militia force out here that we're putting together, a group of patriots. Is that the unorganized militia? This is uh, our constitutional militia. Right. Which we, are, we have the right to organize. Great. There are several hundred of us out here just in, Los An in the San Fernando Valley. And I'd like to let all the other patriots out there know that there are people organizing and getting ready for the rainy day. That's really good to hear. 
We are standardizing on, on weapons calibers and uh, equipment and communications gear. Um, we are getting ready with transportation and money and, uh, and, uh, and, and, to, and to support each other. And we just had the earthquake, and uh, our group is, uh, is supporting each other at this very moment. Um, some of us don't have water running. We're, we're sharing what we have. You know, and this is just is turning out to be a small exercise and, excuse me, in what is to come. I'm really surprised it got on the air. Um, right. Well, this is a surprise for us, too, because you brought up the uh, uh, question of food and uh, water. And I wonder if people... Let me, tell you, let me tell everybody out there, this earthquake was a big earthquake. Big earthquake, a lot of devastation out here. Last night at the markets, there were lines. You couldn't. Most half the stores weren't open, and, and though the damage was centralized into 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 a small area, it disrupted. It's disrupting all of LA. And imagine if there was a large financial crisis. A uh, who knows what any kind of crisis? Right. How it will disrupt your community totally. You must prepare. Absolutely. And I wonder if Bill is listening and smiling and thinking, if only everyone had listened to him and, and prepared with purchasing food that he offered for up to two years for your family. Look how valuable it could have been. Every, and what I what we're suggesting, what I'm suggesting to mem members of the militia who are coming in and joining this, this um, finding out about the new world order and and all the stuff that's going to come down the road, I'm suggesting to the, these people, the first thing they must do is get weapons and ammunition. We are standardizing on certain military caliber weapons out here because in a rainy day, that you'll be able to pick this up off the street. Um, you must, your priority, number one, is weapons and ammunition. Your second priority is reloading equipment. Your third priority is food, clothing. And on down the line, if you can afford it, communications gear, body armor, extra vehicles. We even have a lot of us with non-registered vehicles we can use on a rainy day. Um, we are preparing. Los Angeles is preparing. There are lots and lots, thousands of patriots out here flocking to this cause. Right, Rick. I uh, hate to cut you off and all. Um, I'm going to let you talk another half a minute or so. But um, can you tell me how long ago did you all start getting together and, and preparing? Well, like yesterday or, or last month? Actually, uh, some, I, I'm new to this. Only I'm only six months into this. I saw uh, I, I went to a rally with Linda Thompson, showing the uh, Linda Thompson video. Where? Um, in Los Angeles, and I woke up okay. and I found other patriots, and I started a group, and our group has grown from 15 to 50. Great. When was the rally? Our, our personal group, and there's uh, there's dozens of other groups. Great. When was the rally in um, September? About six months ago. Six months ago. Right on. Um, you tell you, get ready. I just started hearing about this last February. There are a lot of us new to this, and we must point home the fact that it's real. And I do thank you for your call. And we call our we call ourselves the CMF, the Constitutional Militia Force, the CMF. And if anybody wants to rally under that banner. We welcome them. Great. Thanks for your call. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, we didn't hear about the earthquake too much out there, um, but we heard about how people are reacting to it and using their preparedness. Maybe people should call in and ask Bill if he would reopen the foods program for members. All right. Next caller. You're on the air. Hello, Karen. Hello. I, uh, this is Joe, and I, and I live in West Virginia in the hills. Hi, Joe. Lucky you. Uh, what's the, i got to ask, uh, ask you, maybe someone around the country knows something about this. We, I live in a town, well, I don't live in a town, I live out in the hills. But we have a town of about 8,000 people, and uh, and there's an old coal mining track going from one town to another, which is about 50 miles away. Right. And uh, the other town, we got eight or 10,000 people. Yeah. Right. They're redoing this river, uh, this uh, old track for, for commuters. And we have 25% unemployment. No one travels there by, 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 back and forth to these two towns. There's no shopping centers, there's no theaters, there's no malls, there's, there's nothing. Why would they be doing this? Does anyone have any idea? That's a good question. It's scary because it's, it's only about five miles from my home. 
and I live on 59 acres, and, and I can't get anyone to, uh, around here to have anything to do with being patriotic. The patriotic, as far as watching television and uh, things of that type, but they don't want to hear nothing about the patriotic movement. And uh, I buy shells and armor all the time, and, and, and my neighbors seem to think that I'm lost. Well, you just carry on, and quietly your neighbors are going to start looking to you for information. Thank you for your call, and we'll hope to hear from you again with an answer to um, what you've been seeing. I listen to you every night, and I will be watching it, and I will get back with you. Right. You know we are on again at, uh, let's see, it would be midnight your time. i got to catch you at midnight also. All right. Okay. Bye now. Bye. All right. Is there anybody else out there from another part of the country? We're hitting the East Coast, and we've hit the West Coast. Talked about Newfoundland. And we'd like to hear from somebody that attended Waco and the opening of the trial. All right. Hello. 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 You're on the air. Yeah, I'm a new listener, but I've been aware of the problem for about 30 years. Where are you calling from, sir? Oh, uh, Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Yes, ma'am. You come in here spasmodically on that radio and show there. Uh, I have found out that they have miseducated just about everybody that they could. And those that have the best education seem to have the worst because we've lost the meaning of what a republic and form of government is. It's absolutely nothing but a contract that you can read to protect your rights. Uh, we lost our credit in in 60, in uh, 1913, when Congress gave away the credit of the states uh, to the uh, thing called federal, if the people look in their constitution, they won't find the word federal, because federal is, to us is like Soviet is to the Russian people. And uh, it's hard, hard to tell all this stuff because of our social schools, and then the schools, the, big, the heavy schools are all uh, controlled by money power, uh, you know, gravity never changed. That's the laws of nature, nature's God. Centrifugal force doesn't change. The laws of nature are kept standard, and no one breaks those laws. But uh, if you live with the natural law, you're, you're promised in the scriptures that you'll have bountiful harvest and things will work for you. Right, and I'm going to thank you. Your two minutes are up. Thank you for yeah, your call. Thank you Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So that's called from I'm Florida. All right, we'll open up the lines for the next caller. Here they are. Hello. Uh, hello, I'd like to add to the second caller tonight from Los Angeles. <clears throat> There's a lot of patriots in Mississippi um, running into a problem of a lot of uh, Masons joining the patriot movement. I uh, have to be very suspicious of them <clears throat> and their motives. But uh, we've been able to identify MJTF training camps uh, <clears throat> where they're warehousing their uh, black helicopters. Um, Soviet and uh, UN trucks, and uh, <clears throat> we're doing like he is a caller in Los Angeles. We're stockpiling uh, ammunition and guns and uh, uniforms and food, and uh, we're in there with him. But uh, be very careful who you associate with. Any cues on how you recognize people? I've had somebody ask, um, how can we tell? <clears throat> uh, well, a lot of the lower-ranking Masons will just tell you they're a Mason. That's uh, true. The, the, the upper-level Masons, uh, you basically just have to be very suspicious. I, I'm not as uh, adverse uh, <clears throat> first as William Cooper is in identifying Masons, but uh, many of them will identify themselves to you. If you start talking about the Masonic rituals, they might ask you what how you know so much. Uh, or they may uh, contradict what you say. If you tell them the... Uh, something you know about the Masons, they may say, well, that's not, well, how do you know? Well, they start telling you, well, I am a Mason. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of them out there. Right, and I guess your two minutes are up. That's helpful, though. Um, people have asked me, what are we going to do uh, when things begin? How are we going to know who's good and who's against us? All groups. People you know personally. Right, people you've known for a long, long time, preferably. Thanks for calling in. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. We'll wait for the next caller. And can I remind you that we have a world almanac full of information. 
And if you look in the table of contents, you won't find anything in there about CFR, Trilateral, Bilderberg Group. Isn't that strange? Here's our next caller. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Carolyn. I'm Ginny from uh, Saugus, Massachusetts, calling. How are you tonight? Oh, fine, Ginny. How are you? How's your snow up there and cold weather and electricity? Uh, pretty bad. We had an ice storm, and really, we didn't move much up here today at all. Um, I just wanted to touch base with you and tell you that we do have a group going in Massachusetts, New Hampshire. We have some people from Maine, uh, down in Rhode Island, and I believe one of the callers, Pat, called in earlier from Connecticut. Yes, that was good. And uh, we are having a meeting next week, a big one of the New England area. Um, we had a meeting Saturday night, and we did discuss the Gannett stock. And, uh, That's where you wanted me to fax you a copy, and yeah. uh, you lost all the electricity, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> well, I think the electricity is on now, and uh, I can call you after the show and give you the number again if you, you know. You I have the number. Oh, you do have it. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. What else can I tell you now, what we've been doing? Uh, we've been waking people up in this area by going to uh, meetings of our congressmen and passing out. In this state, they passed a resolution that the people aren't even aware of for amendments to the Constitution, and it was passed by a voice vote. And this seems to be enlightening a lot of people because when they read this, they're up in arms, and they are calling their congressmen. And we've had a lot of calls of people wanting to join the organization regarding this particular resolution that has upset them very much. Very good. Thanks for calling in. Okay, I and I thank you. A few minutes are running out, and I uh, hope we'll hear from you again. You sure will. Okay, thanks, okay. Virginia. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, going to meetings, uh, town meetings in your area can be fruitful. Here's our next caller. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, my name is George McDowell from Arkansas. Oh, the uh, Midwest. Yeah, uh, over here in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And we've been trying to wake up the people because I got my hand on a VCR tape about 30 minutes long concerning the school that President Bill Clinton organized some years ago. And what it consisted of was he would get the elite students of Arkansas and told them, out of all the ones, y'all have been, y'all are the elite, you're the cream of the crop. And they would show films on Nazism and homosexuality. So that's what we've been doing. We've been ordering these VCRs and scattering them out across the United States. So I want to encourage everybody just do whatever you can do. Blow the trumpet loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. All right, the phones are open again, and the number is 602-333-2174. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, Carolyn. This is uh, Bruce from New York. Hello, Bruce. Uh, yeah, I'm hardly getting you in. The reception's really bad. I don't know if that's a uni unique problem or if, or if it's that way in general for everybody. But, um, yeah, I'm calling the report on the uh, Waco trial. Oh, good. The survivors. And uh, I was down there. I got down there the 10th and uh, when, when, the, when they were going to pick the uh, jury. And uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I got there late in the afternoon, and uh, there, were, there weren't that many um, protesters. But I did hear that that morning there were about 30 protesters. And uh, I was also there the third day, and uh, there were even fewer protesters there. And um, I don't know, I just, I felt good being down there. I felt like, uh, you know, I was doing something. I drove all the way from New York to go down there, and, uh, you yeah, know, it was an opportunity. It was an opportunity for uh, for, the, for people who know what's going on to really make a stand and, uh, and, and have a voice. And, um, and I know it's hard, you know, because, you know, we're working and, you know, we have our lives to live. But, uh, you know, I, I also... I think it's just important that we really have to understand that our freedoms, you know, there's a price for our freedoms, and, and somewhere along the line, we, we're going to have to, we're really going to have to do a little bit of sacrificing if, if we are going to get back our country. We're going to have to take sides, aren't we? Yeah. And be right up front. Um, did you attract much attention when you were there? Or? Well, I did because, uh, you know, the media... You know, because I was one person with a sign, you know. What did your sign say? Oh, my sign said, um, the New Inquisition, uh, 
uh, I think if I remember exactly what it said. The New Inquisition, uh, the Holy a FBI, ATF, branded the, uh, the Branch Davidians as heretics, and, um, and then I wrote down the, uh, first, second, first and second amendments, and, uh, I think it's the fourth amendment which talks right. about our rights to be secure in our, in our homes and stuff. So, yeah, you, you know, the media would come around and take pictures, and, um, I told them how, uh, my last name is Muhammadu, which, which stands for, uh, the man of God, and if that name goes back to the French Huguenots that came over here during the, uh, during the St. Bartholomew massacre over in Europe, and, uh, you know, it's just a shame, you know, to, to see where this country has gone. I mean, my forefathers came over here to, to, uh, get away from that, that sort of thing. And to see it happening here now, it's, it's really a shame. And, uh, whether or not, you know, I, I, I don't agree with, with, uh, David Koresh's religion, those people's religion or not, is regardless, you know. Uh, what I, what I believe is what I believe, and what ev everybody in this country has a right to, to believe whatever they want to believe. <clears throat> they want to believe that that's God, you know, by all means, in this country you got a right, and, and the government has no, no right at all, no purpose at all, getting into people's, uh, you know. Personal lives. Personal well, lives. Bruce, your time is kind of running a little up, and, hey. uh, I agree with you. Our constitutional rights, one, two, and four, freedom of religion, freedom to bear arms, and freedom of privacy in our homes without having the windows broken in, were what we were speaking out against when I was on the hillside in Waco. And again, when we were at Project 93 on the steps of Washington, D.C. in September 1993. It's been quite a last year, wasn't it, Bruce? Yes, it has been. And I think we're, we're looking towards a very important year and, and I just hope um, you know I just hope more people who know what's going on we you know when these opportunities come up we, we uh, get up to you know take some time off do the sacrifice that needs to be done you know win back our country yeah. thanks for calling Bruce okay really great okay bye all right I think we have time for one more caller Hello, you're on the air. Uh, yes, I wanted to let everybody know uh, we had a People's Constitutional Court going in uh, Tampa, Florida. It's, uh, what is that? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's a common law constitutional court uh, for uh, the people. And uh, I could give you the uh, clerk's uh, phone number if you don't have time to talk about it right now. All right, because we will be breaking in about one minute, and you have that one minute to talk. Uh, phone number would be good. Okay, it's uh, 251-9306. 251-9306. Right, and uh, we need people to refer their problems to the Constitutional Court so that it can be shown support. How long ago did this start? About a year and a half or so. It's been uh, acknowledged as being legitimate by a judge, and uh, not that he has any authority over it because it's our court, you know, we the people. Uh, and Congress has been notified, and, and uh, there has been no reaction from Congress, so it's all legal, and it's it's our court. I should play the other song again, doing it our way, my way, our way. We the people, thank you for calling in about it. Okay. And we'll talk again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Big IR. And uh, the title is Waco, the Big Lie Revealed as a Hoax. And uh, the article uh, purports to tell, uh, or actually has an interview with Ken Carter, uh, columnist in Machine Gun News, uh, that uh, purports to have analyzed uh, frame by frame and found uh, editing and uh, the uh, comment, quote, Linda Thompson suckered us all with this one. Uh, it's not extremely well written, and it isn't particularly clear exactly how they found out that the film was a big hoax, but I just thought that uh, you and Bill might want to check it out. Would you repeat the name of the source again? Yes, the source is The New Gun Week. And the issue? The issue is Friday, January 21, 1994, page 3, and the byline is the industry editor of The New Gun Week, and his name is Dean, D-E-A-N, Spire, S-P-E-I-R. Well, we'll look into it, and uh, one of these days we will come out with the truth, and we'll all be able to agree at least on whatever is true. We're beginning to hear a lot of different points of view. Uh, thank you for calling in and sharing that. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Is there another caller out there? The number is 1-602-333-2177. We'll wait and see if we can hear from another part of the country. I know we have heard in the past from Hawaii. I don't think we've heard from anyone in Alaska yet. Uh, Canada. One six zero two three 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 two one three four. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, greetings from Florida. My name is Robert Donahue. Um, Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Fine. Um, maybe I can just edit that. That was 2174 uh, 333-2174, our fax number. That's our call-in number. What's going on in your area? Oh, um, a lot of stuff. We've got uh, a lot of little patriot movements running around. Uh, I run a Macintosh bulletin board, a BBS for computers. And for about three years now, and I've had all sorts of tech files online to be If you'd like to call, the area code is 813-894-3530. And they can use any communication software and leave me messages, updates from what else is going around around the world. All right. What else do you find is mainly going on in your area that uh, okay. we need we're, to know right now? We're, we're concerned with a few things. Right now we're concerned with the gun laws that are really, really starting to come down around our neck. Uh, number two is Vincent, the black helicopters. Uh, any and all information from around the, the, the United States would be helpful. We're trying to compile some stuff. Another thing that I've been noticing and things that I've been told is uh, the DOD is being uh, it's financing the interstate restructuring. What is DOD? The Department of Defense. Good. Uh, you know, the rest areas and the way station. Right. Being fortified and rebuilt like you wouldn't believe in this area. Uh, the way stations have been rebuilt for almost eight months now. They're like fortresses down here. Uh, two lanes going in and out now between Tampa and Orlando and uh, Tampa and Fort Myers. They're sitting there dormant. They're brand new. They've been built. They've been sitting there for eight months. Uh, so when they go into effect, we don't know. Uh, so anybody that's got any information on that, they can also call me voice at uh, 813-823-7714. That's great. How, how low, low did you find the black helicopters are flying in your area? Um, Turpin Springs, they're flying about, uh, about 200 feet. They're going northeast towards Ocala. Um, somewhere during the middle of the day, they're flying south or uh, a little less than that, about 150 feet, 100 feet. Uh, sometimes they fly real low, like treetop. Right. Thanks for the information. I've heard them that they've hovered over the tops of some people's cars. Oh, yeah. Well, there was, there was a few incidents down here. We tried to pick them up. Well, we know where the, the fuel oil loops are uh, in the local area. Um, we tried to pick them up on scanners. We tried to pick them up on uh, frequency counters to see what, what freaks they're using to talk back and forth. And one guy pulled the frequency meter out of his car when he seen one go by. And the guy guessed he'd seen it or whatever, and he thought it was something. He, he pointed.
pointed his belly at the chopper at the guy because he didn't know what he was pulling out of the car. Oh. But uh, they're playing it. It's like, it's like harassment down here. We're being harassed by the government. We're being harassed by the state local authorities. Are you recommending to everybody that they keep cameras and tape, oh, most tape recorders? And most, most definitely. The, the, the things that you can possibly arm yourself with, communication going from you know, members of your, your other group or family. Right. Definitely keep yourself well supplied with food and water. And people who have uh, car telephones, I understand that they remember to carry them with them. That's that's another good. Definitely. Um, cameras, recording equipment, frequent counters, scanners, anything you can do to uh, help the cause there. Right. I mean, I'm going to have to cut you off because it is a little more than two minutes, and I certainly appreciate your call. God bless you all. Y'all have a nice night. Call again now. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's see if we can hear from another part of the country. There are things going out on out there. We need to share them. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, Carolyn. I'm calling from Louisiana. Oh, great. I'm calling to alert the people that on the 26th of January at 10 a.m. at the state capitol, there will be hearings on gun control legislation before a legislative committee. And I'm calling to urge that everyone from Louisiana please uh, try to be there, even if you have to take a day off from work, because from these hearings they will decide what type of gun legislation, if any, to uh, try to pass in the legislative session. I'm also calling to tell you that we had this uh, raid that took place in Amy, Louisiana, by a multi-jurisdictional task force, and in an effort to try to find out what exactly is going on, I called the so-called Capital District Law Enforcement Planning Council for uh, Baton Rouge and 11 uh, 10 other parishes, which uh, would be counties in other parts of the country. And it seems that they've divided each state up into certain uh, regions by taking and grouping counties or parishes together. Hmm. And I was calling to ask uh, what type of federal funding had been given to the different sheriffs for this drug task force which is bringing in the multi-jurisdictional task force, including the U.S. Army, is against the people. And the young lady who answered the phone told me that all of that information is totally secret. We do not have a right to look at the grants. And if she were to either tell or let someone look at the grant applications for the funds, she would lose her job. So I think this bodes uh, very ill in that it seems that we have a secret police that's being uh, imposed right before our very eyes, and we have no right as taxpayers who have, whose money they are using to be used against us to even see what they promised the federal government they will do. Mm -hmm. And so I would urge that everybody look in their area and uh, try to do a little research, uh, perhaps put the sheriffs on notice that they do not like them entering into agreements with the federal government for law enforcement. I also would urge that everyone look in the yellow pages uh, or the blue pages as they are now and look under Military Department of Emergency Preparedness because I found that we have such a group in uh, Louisiana and I called that number and asked them if they were FEMA and they said no they weren't FEMA but they were the contact directly under FEMA for the state of Louisiana. And uh, so they did give me the FEMA number, and I called FEMA, and she, of course, tried to refer me to our regional headquarters in Dallas. But I think that this is being done without the knowledge or consent of the people when they establish a military department of emergency preparedness. And they are, in fact, setting up a standing army right before our very eyes without our knowledge or consent. I would urge if anybody else has information about this, if they please call in and share it with us. Right, because I think the um, powers that we're working against are sitting there laughing at us because we aren't looking into all of these things as you are. And um, there has been a conspiracy of silence by the news media. I mean, they're nothing but the propaganda arm for the government in that they keep people ignorant of what is really happening. And right, but I think we have a responsibility as citizens, too, to get in there and telephone the media day by day. That's not even a long-distance call. And find out your 1-800 number of your congressman and um, get on the phone. And not only with the congressmen, but with the local law enforcement people like the sheriffs, because they, they are closer to the people, and they do have to uh, be elected. Right, and your so. state, state uh, congressmen also. Another thing is um, considering carrying the Constitution with you at all times, because you never know when you're going to need to know your rights. Well, that's right. It's becoming more and more frequent that we do need to know our rights, even though they seem to have no regard for our rights. But... Um, I'll hang up and listen for the callers. All right. Thank you for calling. Well, that was 
an interesting report. I think uh, all of us also have to be sure that our children all have a copy of the Constitution that they carry with them at all times and that they become familiar with it. Here's another caller. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. I wanted to... Where are you calling from? Uh, California. California. Southern California. Southern. Okay. This is Ming. Ming. Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, I... Talking about children. About children? No, talking about children, and uh, you're calling in. Oh, yes. That's not what I wanted to talk about, though. I wanted to talk about what's, uh, what everyone else is talking about as far as the black helicopters and mm -hmm. that they can contact. Uh, that is like a clearinghouse on that, uh, and she is, her name is Bernadine Smith, and she's head of the Second Amendment Committee uh, here in the United States. And she's been on a lot of radio talk shows lately. She's quite in demand. Uh, but people need to be able to contact her so that they can get information directly from her. Uh, and she will send out packets of information so that everyone will have the same information and know where all these sightings are at and what to be looking for and the laws. Uh, she has it all down on paper in black and white. And uh, it's, it's amazing what this woman has done, and she's spent years and years doing it. So if you don't mind, I'd like to give her phone number out so that people can contact her. And I'd like to also ask if you would be willing to get her on the show as a guest. Well, we'll talk to uh, Mr. Cooper about that when he's feeling better. Okay. Um, this sounds very, very important. What Does she have a name of her group? Uh, no, no, it's the, Han it's the Hanford. She's the one that drew up the Hanford Initiative, which is the Second Amendment uh, clause that she has been trying to get here in California, into our California Constitution, she and uh, Senator Don Rogers. And, of course, the uh, NRA has been blocking her now for almost eight solid years, and she has spent thousands and thousands of her own dollars trying to get this thing through, fighting the NRA. But at any rate, um, can I give... Go ahead. phone number? Go ahead. Yeah, it's 209-584-5209. And uh, if... If you guys can get a hold of her and see if you can't get her on the show, that would be great because people are going to have a lot of questions to ask her. I have a lot of information to give out. Thanks for calling in. Okay. That's helpful. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. That makes me uh, remember something about certain counties and certain states have declared sovereignty. It would be interesting to hear something about one of them. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I'm for you from Canada. Great. Okay, I'll just turn my radio down here. Um, yeah, we, we are... Uh, Which part of Canada? Ontario. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we see the black helicopters up here quite often, too, and um, we know of five different internment camps that they are building in Canada, and there's probably more. Do you know where they are? Uh, I'll give you... Uh, a rough idea? I'll give you a name of one. One is uh, in uh, southern Ontario. It's called the Meaford Tank Range. Mm -hmm. It's near... Uh, it's about 100 miles north of Toronto. You've probably heard of Toronto. Okay? Right. And uh, there's one in Nova Scotia. I'm not sure just where that one is. There's one in Quebec. Um, another one at uh, Cool Lake, Alberta. And uh, also in British Columbia somewhere. So, um, uh, we've seen as many as 15 of these black helicopters flying at once from the, the tank range. It's uh, like an army facility, okay? Right. And how low do they fly? Uh, they're somewhere around three to three hundred to a thousand feet. Oh, they're pretty far up then. Yes, they are. They, they seem to stay up very high. Um, we understand that uh, there's a place called uh, Mitchell's Bay in southern Ontario. It's right across from um, uh, Detroit, and uh, there's a staging area there, area there for these black helicopters, and they fly, fly back and forth across the border there, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Therefore, an Air, an Air Force states there in the states, so they fly back and forth across. Um, and we uh, we're stocking up food and ammunition and guns and that type of thing, and we have been for a few years. And warm clothing too, because you have the cold That's, weather. Yeah, we have some cold weather, and we're trying to get the creeks ready in the North Country in the bush. And, uh, we have a newsletter that we presently send out to people. So we're Could trying. You send to us a copy. <laughs> Could you send us a copy? I certainly will. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling in. Yes, bye-bye. Bye. All right, we'll wait for our next caller. I could mention that we had a call this morning. Uh, I wasn't here to receive it. A call from Ireland. <clears throat> they uh, like very much the lead-in music that William Cooper uses every broadcast. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Carol. This is Kathy in Rhode Island. Oh, Rhode Island. Hello. Yeah. 
Uh, two things. I'd like to know from uh, Virginia in Massachusetts where that New England meeting was going to be. Perhaps it could be night. Oh. Right. Well, <clears throat> perhaps Virginia can uh, call in in the evening show. <clears throat> will you be Will you be listening at midnight? Well, I, <clears throat> another thing, I got an interesting uh, brochure in the mail today. Uh, it's called World Citizenship: A Go Global Ethic for Sustainable Development. From Can you speak up? Okay, from the Bai High International Community. Mm -hmm. All about how we can become world citizens, and it's like they're working with the UN, and they have some interesting um, topics, the vision of world citizenship, the promotion of world citizenship, they say the United Nations government and educational agencies seek to make the principle of world citizenship part of the standard education of every child. Oh my goodness. They have a line, public awareness. And they say campaigns to raise public awareness of the challenges of world citizenship must make use of the full range of media and the arts. Then they have the challenge of world citizenship. World citizenship is a concept as challenging and dynamic as the opportunity facing the world community. And it says it should become the single most important point of ethical reference in all UN activities. I thought this was a very interesting little brochure tying uh, by high in with um, UN. And the New World Order, <clears throat> which... Oh, yeah, isn't it nice how they sent it to me? I also know as far as um, education, um, they do see Peace Corps has a uh, program... The Peace Corps, did you say? Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. They have a program called Worldwide Schools, and they've tried to get it in all the school districts. And they teach um, internationalism through this program. And that what they do is ask the return volunteers to come in and talk about um, the countries they've been to and, you know, how wonderful it is and all that. Which, I mean, it can be, it can be beneficial also, but, um, you know, rather it, it I... It can make us forget our American ways, though, I believe, don't you? Oh, well, that's the thing. I mean, I am a citizen living in the world, but I want to be a citizen of the United States of America. Of America, right. <laughs> so, so I just uh, thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> thank you for calling in. And okay, that's thank thing. you for your program, and God bless you and Bill and his family. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, I think we all have to make an effort to do what Bill has been doing, share uh, the music of our common heritage as Americans and share our symbols and get a little more visibility out there as the United States citizens. Hello, you're on the air. Carolyn, this is me again, and I forgot to tell you, Bernadine just sent me in the mail a copy of something she got last week, <clears throat> faxed to her. They're going to try and get an initiative into California for the for the one world government, <clears throat> and they're going to start with California. Uh, this stuff is scary. She sent me out five pages, and so you guys need to get a hold of her and get a copy of this. Thanks, Bing. That's very helpful. Be on the ballot this year here in California. Thank you for calling back in with that. Okay. Thanks. Bye. I think we have time for about one more call, one or two. If there's someone out there from an area we haven't heard from, here we go. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Joellen. This is Dave in Albuquerque. I'm sorry I'm turning down my radio. Um, that last woman who said she wanted to... Uh, be a citizen of the world, but be a citizen of the United States. We have to be very careful when we say we're a citizen of the United States that we spell that with a capital C because as we've learned from Ralph Epperson and a lot of other good researchers, right. if you're a citizen with a small C, that means you're a citizen of what Mitch Modelisky calls the federal zone or you're a citizen of the uh, total jurisdiction of Congress under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution, which gives them dictatorial powers over Washington, D.C., and all the federal enclaves and forts and things. So let's just be very careful what we call ourselves so we know that we mean a citizen of the 50 states united. 
Very good. I'm glad you called and reminded reminded us of that point. Yeah, that's that's a really it's important. And I, I'm just starting to get a handle on understanding how that works. Um, I strongly recommend Mitch Modelewski's book, The The Federal Zone. And if you'd like, I'd be happy to give you the address. He is, uh, has a group called the Account for Better Citizenship, and that is uh, care of USPS Post Office Box 6189, San Rafael, California Republic. Don't He says don't use the two-letter uh abbreviations for the states because that identifies you. That's another way they trick you into becoming a 14th Amendment. Right, and I'm going to have to cut you off. Um, okay. People can call in for the information. And thank you for calling about that. You're welcome, Carol. Have and a- we'll say goodbye to this caller and to everyone around the world that's been listening. I think maybe you've had your eyes open tonight. There are things going on. People are preparing for what is coming down. Remember to call Gene Miller at Swiss America, 1-800-BUY-COIN, and listen to this. And now the end is near, and so I pay. The final curtain My friend I'll say it clear I'll state my case I'm certain I will A life that's full I travel each And every highway And more much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do. I saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step on the byway. More, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I took on more than I could do. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out.
the hour of the time to all of you around the world. William Cooper is still not feeling well, and we're glad that he did the program last night, but it uh, really has delayed his recovery. He's listening at home with his wife, Annie, and his daughter, Pooh, and he's scheduled for us another call-in at this hour. Call in to 602-333-2174 with all of you listeners telling us what is going on in your area in two minutes. Try to prepare your talk to tell us what's going on, and I'll open the lines in just a few moments. Keep it accurate and without any accusations that you can't prove. We'd like to hear from someone about Waco and also about the earthquake in Los Angeles. I do know that there's an ice storm that's taken place up in Nashville, New Hampshire. My parents there have reported that uh, they've had an electricity stop um, for about three-hour periods. And I've heard this in Massachusetts and Washington, D.C. also. Uh, there's a suggestion that you uh, prepare for a lot of these difficulties and get out your gas heaters for there's probably more to come. Be sure to order the tape of tonight's earlier program. I think the listeners really shared a lot of meaningful information about the dangers we're facing in this country. You can order the tape from Kaji, Post Office Box 1420, Sholo, Arizona, 85901. You can also telephone me seven days a week at 602-333-5174 for information here at the Research Library and Broadcasting Studio of William Cooper's Citizen Agency for Joint Intelligence. That's CAGI. If you send a dollar with a self-addressed stamped envelope, you can get the information packet, ask for the Gannett stock information, and you might even ask to have the book, uh, Behold a Pale Horse, sent at the same time. It'll save time in your getting some vital information for what we have to face in the future. I have a report here from uh, Nova Scotia that uh, someone is waiting there to hear the new program that is being broadcasted out of Newfoundland. I have a letter from Jim Fiddler in Newfoundland saying, Dear Bill and Carolyn, I'm writing you this letter to tell you some very good news. At 6 p.m. on Friday, January 14, 1994, the Hour of the Time debuted on CHMRFM in St. John's, Newfoundland, the oldest city in North America, where Marconi received his, the first wireless radio signal just after the turn of the century. CHMRFM is at 93.5, cable 103.5. Um, Jim Fiddler and his group there are going to be working on fundraising for equipment so that they can have live broadcasts. Be sure to listen on Friday from 11 to 12 in the morning. If I mention 6 p.m., please correct that to 11 to 12 on Fridays. Now, we'll open the lines if there's somebody calling in. Here's someone. Hello, you're on the air. This is Jeffrey Bankett reporting from New Orleans with good news for your campaigns. First of all, I was able to get in contact with the American Family Association and with Focus on the Family and gave them your address. Tonight, the John Birch Society had a meeting in Metairie at the Landmark Hotel with John McManus as featured speaker. I was able to give the address and name of the organization and the program about the stocks at that time and received a few inquiries at that meeting. Of course, McManus has put out a brand new, new um, book entitled Financial, uh, The Financial Peril, something like that. Um, at any rate, he's, he's going along the same lines as Hooper, 
in terms of pointing out how the Federal Reserve is putting us into such debt conditions that they want to threaten us with either liquidation or the New World Order, etc. Naturally, he's also promoting aspects of the Birch Society, such as tax reform immediately, in which you take bulletins about your congressmen and spread them throughout the district to let people know what your congressmen are doing. All in all, 100 people attended the meeting, and it was very well received. Well, that's really very good information, and you've really compiled it well to fit into the two minutes. I thank you for calling. Thank you. All right. Let's see if we can hear from someone else. Uh, the number is 333-2174. Area code is 602. Is there anyone out there waiting to call in? Here's a caller. Hello. You're on the air. Hi. How are you tonight? Fine. Who are you Jim calling from? Uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I had uh, called and talked the other evening, and he told me to call back. What I was calling about tonight, I just uh, got out of a meeting we had here in uh, Dallas. It's uh, two, two uh, Tuesday nights a month. There's a group called the uh, Citizens for Legal Reform. And uh, anyway, Michael Ben was there. He was not the main topic speaker at this group, but he was, you know, Michael Ben is the guy that's putting the uh, uh, impeach Clinton thing together. And he was telling us about a real interesting thing that happened a few weeks ago. The uh, Some Secret Service people had come out to his house and was questioning his, his motives and, and how his thing got so big so quick and with not that much money behind it. But uh, a few days later, he said real early one morning, he was awoken by some noise. <clears throat> he went outside and said the fog was real heavy, and uh, but there were these black military helicopters up above the houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, a little bit later, uh, a friend of his that lived across the street, his house burnt to the ground. And the more they got to check in, uh, his house, his and Michael Ben's house were constructed exact, physically exactly the same. And uh, they said they thought lightning had hit this house and burned it down. And he thought it was just very, very interesting how all these things happened just at the same time that these uh, helicopters were uh, you know, hovering right over. So they were so close to his house that they blew 21 shingles off of his roof onto his yard. But they being they got the wrong house, and uh, his neighbor's house mysteriously burnt to the ground. Uh, Thought y'all might be uh, interested in that. That is interesting. Uh, Could you tell us again where you're from? I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. This meeting is in is in Dallas, Texas. It's uh, the second Tuesday of every single month, and there was. About uh, four or five hundred people at the meeting tonight, and mm -hmm. he just got up and gave a short little little speech and telling people what was going on. He said at this point he has over fifteen million uh, signatures uh, on the petitions to impeach Clinton. He said there is also a, a trial going on in the Kansas City area that is getting no coverage, that has documented proof that Clinton was a KGB agent. Now. Uh, you know, I, 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 have, I have not even heard of the case, but he was he was just referring to it and referred how you got no uh, media coverage on this trial at all. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting that these uh, black helicopters were above this man's house and then uh, mysteriously his neighbor's house that looks just like his. Uh, right. We thank you for calling in for the hour of the time and giving us that, that information. Uh, you will remember that impeachment of President Clinton may not be the route that we'll be able to go, but uh, perhaps if the evidence is clear enough, uh, there will be an impeachment. We'll ask for the next caller, see if there's someone right here calling in. Remember that um, while you're looking for ways to protect yourself, that you can help us with purchase of Gannett stock Many people are turning their IRAs in and uh, purchasing stocks so that we can go to the stockholders meeting in May and have something to say about more truth getting into the media. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Carolyn, this is Tom in Fort Worth. Uh, the other caller uh, did real well, except for one thing, we need to get the word out where Michael Ben can be reached. Um, he can be reached at post office box. 671054, Post Office Box 671054, Dallas, Texas 75367, 75367. 
uh, you can write to Mr. Ben and uh, he'll send you a package and some petition forms. All right. Thank you for your information. Okay, Carolyn. Thank you're you. doing a great job. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. We'll get ready now for the next caller. And remember the number is one six zero two three 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 two one seven four. That's also our fax number during the day if you have information that you'd like to send along to us. Or you can send it in a letter by mail. Um, be sure to include the top of the newspaper with the name of the newspaper and the date. All right, here's another caller. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, hi. Uh, this is Connie from Connecticut. I have a slight speech impediment. Bear with. Uh, I first started listening to you when you had that young man from Arizona. That was my very first time I heard you who was besieged by the FCC. Oh, Remember him? Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. William Duggan. We need a few more of him around here, desperately. But this place, your earlier caller didn't say, is a hot stronghold of, uh, let's say, the insider power, okay? Half of our Washington delegation is listed as members, and you feel their hands on your throat at every step. I do mean the media, and let's say the Washington Post owns the main papers, the TV affiliates, and we get the news accordingly, okay? So we desperately need a Mr. Dugan in these parts. We have only two AM stations left with Patriots Broadcasting locally. We're very glad to have your shortwave here. And we have only one little paper that's telling the truth, the uh, Connecticut Beacon. So, besides that, I just wanted to ask you if, if perhaps sometime in the near future, that uh, Mr. Cooper will do a broadcast on counting the ballots. There's much said. There's a lot of suspicion about the, the ballots, okay? All right. Uh, you know, he's listening at home, so everybody out there calling in, yes. you're talking to him as well as to me. Um, yes, uh, well, that's uh, very much desired by many people that I know, okay? This is a very difficult thing to... All right, and I know also that if William Dugan is listening out there, you'd probably like to hear from him, too. Absolutely. Uh, how he does it. Right. I remember the case very, very well. I was absolutely hypnotized by it. Thank you for very calling in. I heard him. Right. Thank you for calling in. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Right. All right, we'll be waiting now for the next caller. Here they are. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, I'm calling from Los Angeles, and uh, first of all, I just want to let you know that you're doing a good job in, in your work. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And uh, I'm just going to say, I noticed that in certain parts of the nation, it seems like there's a strong patriot movement in other places that people are still kind of, uh, shall we say, in low gear. And I just want to let the people out there know that here in Los Angeles, there is a patriot organization that doesn't really even have any name to it. It's just a bunch of pages that get together uh, on a weekly basis and we discuss different issues pertaining to America, her constitution, and the conflict with the New World Order. And uh, this group uh, has between roughly 50 or 60 people uh, on our weekly meetings and uh, on a monthly week we have about maybe mm, two to 300 people. And uh, this is all done on a grassroots level, and we have our words spread over a talk radio station on the AM band. And uh, the people there go ahead and let you call in and talk about your your um, your feelings or your opinion on things, and they go ahead and talk about the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and all those lovely things that you don't hear about from NBC News and PBS and the Los Angeles Times and the rest of the establishment media. It sounds like a, a good movement. Uh, I hope everybody else around the country is listening. Hawaii also and Alaska. Um, do you think all of the people that you're involved with have copies of the Constitution and that their children have copies? I would say most of them do. I don't know that all of them do, but an awful lot of them know the Constitution well, and we're out there fighting for it on the municipal level, the state level, and on the national level as well. Good. Thank you for calling. Thank you, and you have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. All right. We'll wait for the next caller. Here they are, ready to go. Hello. You're on the air. Hi, uh, Carolyn. This is Jeff from Northern Michigan. 
How you doing tonight? Oh, just fine. That's Good. great. A little oh. bit of the Middle West, Middle East. Oh, yeah, about 25 below at night. I hope Bill is feeling better, and I just want to say I listened to Tom Valentine earlier tonight on Shortwave and recovering that Waco trial, and it, uh, it'd be good for people to tune in, you know, to whatever programs they can get information out to find out what's going on. And one more thing, is like we were talking about the other night, best to buy your guns and ammo now, because it looks like it's the uh, last roundup, if you know what I mean. Right, and I think uh, we're all out there buying Gannett stock also, so that we can get more truth out there to everyone. Yes, indeed. Well, you yeah, yeah, have a good night. I'll get off here early and uh, tell Bill thanks for giving out truthful information. Can't believe the big three, so you yeah, have a good night, Carolyn. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. All right, we're ready for the next caller. And remember, the number is 602-333-2174. Here we go. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, this is Michelle from Norman, Oklahoma. Hello, hello, Michelle. Hi. Um, I want some information about this Gannett stock. Where All can right, I well, get it, and how does it help the show? All right, uh, we'll deal with that another day. Do you have any information uh, from your area of what's going on? Are you a new listener? Uh, I am a very new listener. Um, I have followed the conspiracy theories for a long time, but this is the most in-depth I've ever heard, and it's fascinating, and I've become a regular listener, uh, but a lot of stuff sort of goes over my head because I have not heard the background. Right. Well, we'll deal with that on another program, and do you have any information to share from your area? Or is... uh, no, not really. just wanted to find out how I could help. All right. We'll be talking another time. You can call me right here in the studio. And we'll go on to the next caller for information. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for calling. <laughs> All right, we're waiting for the next caller. Here they are. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, I'm calling from Wisconsin. Um, I, I just have a sense that uh, y your callers uh, maybe are paranoid. I, I don't know if you're talking about Clinton being a KGB agent. Um, certainly something like that would have come to light uh, throughout the course of the campaign uh, with as much uh, talk about his uh, uh, affairs with Jennifer Flowers and so forth. Uh, can, can you give me some sense of what this might be all about? Well, I think the program tonight is to cover activities that are going on in your own area. Um, the evidence is there, uh, and you can call in later and... Uh, speak about this, but do you have anything going on in your area that you can share with us? Uh, no, not necessarily. I've just tuned in. Uh, so I, I You're a fairly new listener, you mean? Yes. Well, welcome to the program, and we'll talk later, all right? Thank you. Thank you for calling. All right, we'll wait for the next caller here. 333 Hello, you're on the air. Hi, it's Lawrence speaking. Hello, Lawrence. Yeah, I'm calling from the uh, Laurentian Mountains in uh, Canada. Great. I hope you have some good news to tell us from Canada about activities going on in your area. Well, no, I wasn't exactly why I called, because I sometimes I can't get you at night, and then when I do get you, so, some religious music comes in and I can't hear you. How do I write to Bill Cooper? Uh, the address I gave earlier is Post Office Box. But I just got you. Right. Post Office Box 1420. 1420. Sholo, capital S-H-O-W. H-A-L-O-W. Capital S-H-O-W, capital L-O-W. Yes, S-H, yeah. A-Z, Arizona. Yes. 85-90. Yes. Yeah. One. Yeah, I wish we had a program like that here in Canada. Well, tune in. Remember that we broadcast at 6 and 10 p.m. Mountain Time. You can figure out the time in your own Yeah, area. there is a big time difference, but uh, usually you come on at midnight here. Uh, we'll uh, talk another time because we are focusing on the subject of what's going on in your area. So yes, I know. Uh, send in for an uh, information packet. Yes. All right. Yeah, okay, because, you know, don't forget, what's happening down there can come up here. 
That's right. And um, this is why I'm always very interested. I'm glad you put it that way because we are fighting for our Constitution and Bill of Rights and freedom in this country, and it is definitely going to affect the rest of the world. Yeah, because no, it's because go, when our Prime Minister was in with Bush all the time, it's affected us too. That's right. So thank you very much, Carol. Thank you for calling. Right on. Bye. Yes, sir. All right, we'll wait for the next caller. Here they are. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, um, I'm calling from Baltimore, Maryland, and um, I just wanted to uh, get, give you an update on uh, the raid that happened uh, downtown. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody's called in about this, but uh, we have uh, sort of a red light district called The Block. It's about uh, two uh, square blocks uh, not far from our inner harbor area. And um, our uh, governor authorized the National Guard to come in and perform a raid, and they gave many different reasons for coming in, uh, liquor license violations, uh, prostitution, drug distribution, and I think there was a total of uh, 25 warrants that were served. Um, there, there were some people that were held for about uh, six hours or so, uh, handcuffed, um, and they... It's, it's supposedly uh, just based on probable cause. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, right. Let me just, while you think, I'll just ask you a question. Um, was this announced ahead of time? Did people know about this ahead of time? Not, not to my knowledge. Um, I did. I heard about this uh, from a report on uh, uh, the Zoe, Her Zoe Hieronymus show on WCBM. And uh, she basically said that uh, the Maryland Constitution prevents uh, something like this from happening, that our, our state uh, constitution is supposed to um, guarantee that uh, such an action would be uh, authorized by both the governor and uh, the, the state, legis state legislation. But since the leg legislation is out, um, basically the governor has taken upon his hands to uh, perform the raid anyway, and of course we were told that um, it was basically just to get rid of crime, and I also heard that, uh, that actions like this are being uh, performed around the country in order to get funds from the uh, newly passed crime bill, and so uh, a lot of people suspect that was the reason for the raid. Well, it might be one of the reasons that's given, but uh, we can't always believe everything we hear. Um, can you tell me what day this happened, and um, did you find anything reported in the press besides this one radio program? Yes, it was reported in the Baltimore Sun, and if I'm not mistaken, it happened, it, it was this past weekend, uh, for the Martin Luther King weekend. It was either, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember though. Well, thank you very much for your information. That was a good report. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, we have a new caller. I'll try to keep uh, this down so that you don't get the bad sounds over the air. Hello, you're on the air. Yes. My name is um, Tom Jefferson. I see. We have a special caller. We have a special caller with a very special piece of information. All right, we have another caller. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Carolyn. My name is Guy Heller. I'm calling from Lambertville, New Jersey. Hello, Guy. I just wanted to inform you that um, around December the 31st, um, in the Philadelphia Inquirer, they were handing out free leaflets for um, Freemasonry in Pennsylvania and around the world. And I wanted to know if this was peculiar, if uh, this was a recruitment drive of sorts, seeing they were a secret society. It made me kind of curious on why they'd be putting leaflets in major newspapers. Maybe we'll hear from some other callers. Um, we did have a few of them sent to us. I believe they're 16 to 20 pages long. Yeah, exactly. And also, um, I read in the same newspaper on January the 12th, a very uh, famous baseball pitcher named Steve Carlton, um, who's very popular in Philadelphia, was uh, speaking uh, openly about the Skull and Bone Society. And um, it's uh, pretty peculiar that uh, people with big names are now realizing what's going on in the conspiracy 
and it's about 40 degrees below zero here in New Jersey. Well, thanks for your call, and I think people like you are helping to wake up the sheeple out there that are uh, not aware of what's going on in our country and in the world. Well, thank you. I also um, I wanted to know if there was a way that I might be able to get information on uh, when uh, Mr. Cooper would be touring with seminars. Uh, I think the best way is to keep listening. And okay. if you uh, purchase the tape of the 6 o'clock program tonight, you might um, get an inkling of something that might be in the wind, as they say. Okay, well, okay. I appreciate your time, and uh, good luck to you, and I'm really glad uh, to see you as an addition to the show. Oh, thank you. All right, bye -bye. calling you. Bye. The number is 333-2174. Here's a new caller. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello, how are you doing? This is Randy in Illinois. I'm in the Chicago area. Hi, Randy. What's going on in your area? Well, it's for a good cold. two minutes. Okay, it's very cold here. It's uh, 20 below zero, and uh, I must say, uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, paranoia going across the land is uh, is sweeping here too on guns. Uh, the uh, state of Illinois is. Uh, uh, in the verge of uh, passing a uh, what they call a, a assault weapon ban, who knows what an assault weapon is? Uh, the, the governor of Illinois proposed it. He's got he's a Republican and he's been an NRA National Rifle Association back to man. Uh, they've he, they've supported him, and he's he's a gunner himself, our Republican governor Edgar, and he uh, uh, has been um, uh, his. Appeals have been uh, uh, chewed on by uh, Democrat uh, contenders for governor, uh, and they're all uh, assault weapon banners, and uh, from the Chicago area, and uh, so he proposed this ban. Uh, so I guess he's a turncoat. Uh, fortunately, in our in our house, uh, we have a, a nice gentleman. Uh, he's a Republican named Pate Phillip from DuPage County, where I'm from, west of Chicago, and he says uh, the governor doesn't get everything the governor wants. So uh, he, he's going to thwart this. Uh, also, uh, uh, the state of Illinois uh, does not have what they call a local preemption uh, bill to uh, preempt uh, local laws on gun on gun issues. Uh, so this this session, no later than March probably, the uh, there will be a law passed saying that only Illinois makes laws governing uh, guns. So uh, Cook County, which is Chicago's county, and Chicago ought to uh, their illegal uh, gun bans ought to be uh, uh, upturned, and any other uh, uh, thing uh, ought to be, uh, you know, negated. And I just want to say, uh, I know that the federal government has uh, uh, got legislation to ban guns, uh, but I must say that people need to get out there and get involved in their local uh, uh, issues because it seems like the paranoia to ban guns and the, and the uh, bills that are coming out to ban guns are coming at the local and, you know, lesser government areas. Uh, so, you know, people need to get down to their county uh, boards and uh, meetings and their their state uh, legislatures and their city government municipal uh, authorities and they need to get involved because these are the people, uh, these people not only ban guns, they, uh, they tell you you can't have them anymore, you know. Thank you. Um, that's a really good summary. Uh, people have to get involved. Right. Uh, if the federal government's going to ban guns, you know, they, they'll probably let you uh, keep what you got. But these local governments, they say you got two weeks to get them out of the county, or, and, and if you keep them, you know, they're going to put you in jail, you know. Thanks for your information. I'm Thanks. glad you called. Yeah. And remember, if you join the NRA, you've already registered your gun. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Here's our next caller. Hello. Hello. You're on the air. Hello, Miss Nelson. How are you? This is Dr. Sam. Well, hello, Dr. Sam. How are you tonight? Oh, just fine. What information do you have? Well, you know, the gentleman was talking about Illinois up there and how they're uh, taking your gun rights away. Well, I, I just want to bring to your attention that a gentleman by the, uh, by the name of Elijah Kent Kane wrote the uh, Illinois Constitution, and he was a 32nd degree Mason, and he also wrote out the rights to keep and bear arms in the state of Illinois. I just wonder how many Illinoisans know this uh, little bit of history. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Now, wait right. just a minute. i got wait. something else I want to tell right. you, too. And just be aware, I might have to cut you off if the break comes, but I'll keep you on. Okay. I just so want to, uh, everyone to go down into the grocery stores and start looking at these uh, triangles that you're seeing on all of your food, 
and all of these uh, boxes and everything, of cereal and everything, this is this new age movement that uh, Mr. Cooper has been talking about. And also, look at the U and K on all of your canned goods. This is another uh, new age closure tax that's put on food. Right. And I think many people are counting dozens of triangles and <clears throat> pyramids. Well, you see them on television every place else. I mean, right. they're trying to imprint this into people's mind that uh, this New Age movement is good for the American people. But what it is, it's enslavement. Right. And, what and we... uh, the Masonic Order is behind all of this. Right. And we need to get some... Take over and uh, okay. you want to repeat that last sentence? Well, I just say I hope all of your listeners will go to the grocery stores and look for these triangles on all of these food and the canned goods and everything and these U's and K's and then go ask your uh, your store merchants what this means and see what they tell you. Spread the word. Yeah, Thank ask you. them and say, what is this here? Am I having to pay a tax on it? They'll find out that they are. Thank you for calling and for the information. Thank you. Thank you. We have another caller. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, I was wondering if I, I might be able to read a couple paragraphs from an article I found. Um, uh, we are talking about things that are going on our, in our area. Can you relate it to your area and what's going on? It has to do with uh, jury selection for uh, political trials. Um, uh, all right, a couple of sentences. Um, it says here, uh, Congress, Congressman George Hampton in testimony before the House Ways and Means Oversight Committee on 426-82, described how the wife of the South Dakota man convicted for a tax crime told him that the U.S. Attorney had access to information on the personal tax situation of all members of the jury who sat on the case. The defense attorney was embarrassed to ask about it, too embarrassed to ask about it, or even question whether the U.S. Attorney was acting properly, but it turned out that he, he had such information on every person called to serve on every jury, even when the defendant was not being tried for income tax violations. That's one paragraph from an article um, in the sub summer issue 1992 of the Fully Informed Jury Association. Uh, the title of the article is... Uh, how Uncle Sam Bats 1000 in IRS and Political Trials, and it's page number 28. Thank you, sir. That's very informative. And I'm going to... You the article. Pardon? See if you can find the article for Fine. your... We will. Thank you for your call and for the information. We're going to go into our little music break. <laughs> We'll play a little more music at the end from Enya, but at this moment, we're going to talk about Swiss America Trading, our sponsor. I want you to call 1-800-BUY-COIN and talk to Gene Miller. Get him to send you the free newsletter and talk to him about ways to protect your assets. As I did at 6 o'clock, I'm going to read you the amendment Number 27, proposed by Congress on September 25, 1789. 
I wonder if you know when it was ratified. It was May 7, 1992. We move slowly on some things, but we are steady and strong. Our Constitution is steady and strong. This one says, no law, varying the compensation for the services of the senators and representatives shall take effect until an election of representatives shall have intervened. Amendment number 27, ratified on May 7, 1992. Call Jean Miller at 1-800-BUY-COIN. Protect your assets. You know that something is coming. Something is going to happen in our country. Listen to this from the World, New World Order Connection, which lists the civ CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral, and the Bilderberg Group members, members that run the media, our government, the universities, industry, the military. And remember that William Clinton is a member of all three, and you don't find any of this kind of information in the World Almanac. The Secretary of the Treasury is a foreign agent. Nelson continues by documenting the establishment of the International Monetary Fund, the fund, and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the bank, as alien foreign financial institutions. Number 22, USCA 286, naming the Secretary of the Treasury as the Governor of the Fund and the Bank. Then in 1950, pursuant to the Reorganization Plan Number 26, 5, USCA 903, the Secretary of the Treasurer was appointed as the receiver in bankruptcy. On August 15, 1971, President Richard Nixon reversed international mon monetary policy by officially declaring the non-convertibility of the U.S. dollar, the Federal Reserve note, into gold. The Nelson Brief proceeds to document evidence that the entire money system and most of the banks of the United States now operate under the control of the International Monetary Fund. Things have been going on for a long time. You need to call Gene Miller at Swiss America Trading and talk to him about how you can protect your assets. Remember the song we played on the program yesterday, Paper Money, written by Carl Klang. Gene Miller has information for you about how you can purchase different types of gold and silver coins, get rid of your paper money. Earlier in the Los Angeles earthquake report, the importance of being prepared was spoken of. It included things like water, food, warm clothing, medical supplies, and money in case you had to go out and purchase something. When the things begin to get worse than what they are right now, are you going to have enough gold and silver coins so that you could go out and get that loaf of bread that you are bound to need? Call Gene Miller at Swiss America Trading. Ask him for the newsletter. Talk to him about what you could do. All right, we're ready for another caller. Here we go. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, good evening. This is Jack from Altadena. I had a report that I thought that Bill would be most interested in and the listeners, too. It had to do with us uh, returning from the Sierras coming down 395 and about uh, four to six minutes past China Lake. I noticed, seeing I was the passenger, we traded off uh, doing the driving schedule. And as I was sitting there, looking out the window towards China Lake direction as we just passed it, I noticed uh, it was a very clear sky, and in the middle, off to the heading on the eastern side of the 395 heading south, that's 395, uh, the highway, we noticed a, uh, I noticed a dark 
massive cloud just hanging about 1,000 yards off of the highway. I told Joe to pull over, and we studied it, and we turned the lights off and watched this thing. As I watched, I think what we were viewing was some very advanced form of electronic camouflage on a B-2 bomber parked in anti-grav mode, just sitting right there, because I looked everywhere around with binoculars to find another cloud like this. The reason I believe it was camouflage was because the, op the, the, the capability of this technology to obscure the density of the craft itself, like, for instance, the front edge leading wing edge, would apparently show from moment to moment as the cloud would move around the wing and it would kind of enfold, meaning it was an electronic envelope of some sort. When apparently they saw our car pull over and kill the lights, I would think that that cockpit must have been staring straight at us. They must have said, turn and move. And I got the psychic feeling there was actually intelligence sitting there. They turned it. This craft, this cloud, if you will, backed up into an 18-mile-an-hour wind, made a 60-degree flat rotation into the wind directly, and headed off into the wind at about 30 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour. And I thought that you might be interested, your listeners, to hear that there might be additional other kinds of testing going on in the scope of electronic camouflaging, which we should not, um, we should not uh, forget that this technology can be applied to ground-based solid stationary sites. Thank you. That's really very interesting. Can you remind us again the day and... Uh... I will give it exactly. That would be January the 8th, 1994. Saturday at about 10.54 was the sighting. It was all over by 11.02. And where was this? On U.S. 395 heading south, just about four and a half minutes past the Ridge Crest turnoff. And it seemed, as, the main thing to say is, I felt that they felt us watching them and turned the craft away. They didn't want to be observed. But I also get the intention that this is how they check whether their camouflage netting system is working properly, to pull the craft up up near the highway and see if anyone calls any UFO report. Right. Would you tell us again the state? California. Okay. China Lake. Now, what you're saying again, too, reminds us that we need to keep with us cameras, video cameras, tape recorders, and keep a journal with you so that you can record accurate data as you have you shared with us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent call. Good night. All right. We'll wait for the next caller, 217-4333-2174. You're on, you're on the air. Hi. I just wanted to make a comment regarding the guy who called up about the symbols and said that it had to do with the New Age movement. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. If he knows anything about uh, kosher supervision, those are all symbols that are used for kosher supervision. It has nothing to do with the New Age movement. And if he wanted to get a whole guide, a shopping guide for the kosher consumer, he could call the New York State Consumer Protection Board at 99 Washington Avenue, Albany, New York, 12210, and you'd get a listing of about 50 of them. Thank you for your information. All right. All right. Uh, so, so at least you have some information there. Also, I don't know of anything going on in New York, which is where I'm calling from, uh, basically the Manhattan area, anything as far as patriots. All I know is patriots for profit out here. There's nobody that's doing any serious work. So I hope there's somebody listening who uh, might get in contact with you and uh Spread the word as to right, you know, remember, what we can do around here. Remember, you're there. You have already begun just by being interested and by starting to ask questions. Thanks for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, I think uh, we will have to research that a little further. I find that a lot of the triangular food information, um, pyramid shapes on the back of loaves of bread is not an accident, though it explains a lot of what is in the foods. Here we have another caller. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm calling from Beaumont, Texas. Um, there's something going on here. It's uh, 
It's really outside of Beaumont. It's a town called Vider, Texas. Right. Are you familiar with that? I'm sure some of our listeners are, too. Well, it's been in national news because they're, there's a all-white housing project, and they're trying to uh, integrate it. And uh, the federal government, well, Housing and Urban Development, has come down and taken over the housing authority <coughs> excuse me, in, the, in the county that's right outside of Beaumont. And uh, it seems to me that it's sort of like... Uh, the uh, uh, order out of chaos theory because uh, there's really never been any racial strife in recent uh, years in my observance around here and now uh, this has made national news and the the clan, the Ku Klux Klan from outside of Vider has come in, uh, the Grand Dragon of the KKK of Texas who is from Waco uh, has come down so it's all outsiders that are coming down here you know, making it look like there's a white separatist type thing down here. Now, Vider has a history of KKK in it, but um, I don't know, it's just kind of strange what's going on. Could you elaborate just a little more on the media coverage? Because you know that much does not enter the media. Okay. Well, this has made national news. It's been on, uh, well, it's been on a lot of the talk shows, like Montel Williams came down here. Uh, it's been on Current Affair, which they did a, a very sensationalized type thing. Uh, but all the people who were making the uproar from outside the area, like the Grand Dragon from Waco, Texas, uh, what's strange about it, I don't know, Waco is where the Grand Lodge of Freemasonry in Texas is, by the way. Uh, Vider, this area has a lot of strong you know, Masonic background, like Beaumont, Texas was... Uh, really got it started when the Spindletop Gusher came in in the 1900s. And uh, the, the local university here, Lamar University, was uh, founded or named after Mirabu B. Lamar, who was a uh, Republic of Texas president. He was a Freemason. Uh, Ryder, I was looking in the phone book the other day, there's a, in, uh, a place called Two Volcane Industries in Vider, And Two Volcane is the password for the third degree um, grip or whatever in masonry, which I thought was kind of strange to actually have in two volcano industries. But uh, I don't know, it's just hard to tell with all this, the, the media attention on it and Washington, D.C. coming down here. They asked the whole Housing Authority Board to resign, and they took it over, and they're running it. They just moved in, I think, 10 black families, and they have uh, they have a fence around it. They have federal, I believe federal marshals are down there. What kind of a fence? Uh, it's a, it's a chain link fence. They put it around the whole housing project. The and they're just making a big deal out of nothing, it seems right. like. Uh, the fact that it did hit the media tells you something because so much of the important news is not reaching us through the regular media. Right. Well, it seems like this, this yeah, they've, they've made a media circus out of it to call attention to it. Right. Uh, that includes the newspapers where you're from? Oh, yeah. Oh. And this has been in, the, in national papers. It's been in... Uh, it's been on national news. Henry Cisneros was down here. Um, I'm not sure his position in housing and urban development. Maybe he's he's on the cabinet, I believe. So he was down here. Um, Janet Reno was here, by the way, Monday um, for for Martin Luther King Day. But she had some comments on Vider, Texas. Uh, Texas Monthly Magazine had a cover story about it. They call it the most hate-filled town in America. But uh, I don't think it really is. I think there is there is racism in every town, but. Um, it seems to be the uh, Ordo Ad Chaos type theory to me. That's what it seems like is going on. It's pretty interesting, though. I'm sure you'll, if you watch the news, you're going to be hearing more about it because I believe there may be some actual violence if, uh, if this goes on. The black families who have been there have had to move out because of supposed harassment. But I right. think the harassment actually is coming from outside. Right. We'll look for you for some further information on this then. Um, be sure to mail it in or fax it in. Okay, sure Thanks will. Thanks a lot for calling. Okay. Do we have another caller? Here we are. You're on the air. Hello. Oh, gee, it didn't even ring. Yes, I wanted to talk about some executive orders that were signed by Oklahoma Governor David Walters concerning uh, youth education in Oklahoma. Very good. He has signed a, uh, an executive order, and I'm going to quote from it here. 
He's established a commission of comprehensive health education. And it says, the commission shall collect and assess relevant data and survey instruments regarding comprehensive health issues, including, but not limited to, the Youth Risk Behavioral Survey, supported by the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, this Youth Risk Behavioral Survey is a test, a psychological test, which is being illegally given to students in the public schools in Oklahoma, and they are trying to assess and develop rapid adaptation to change without protest. And a lot of this has to do with um, sexual attitudes and uh, do your parents smoke or drink or do your parents own guns. And now that uh, only a gun has become a health issue, uh, this is going to fall under the disease and control prevention situation. And another order that he signed relating to the same thing talks about that the parents have to sign a consent form for their children to take these tests. It says these services shall be held confidential. But then it says all information shared with the schools or any other entity will be released only by informed consent between provider and parent or guardian unless otherwise required by state or federal law. Well, since this Youth Risk Behavioral Survey is supported and funded by the Federal Centers for Disease Control Prevention, that information is required to be released without consent. We might so, like to hear from some of the mothers and fathers of the children who uh, are refusing to sign Oh, consent. yes. Well, what we've had several here. and There's been a, a big stink in Oklahoma about it, and the I news media has carried a lot of information, pro and con. Uh, and several parents have refused to have, allow their children to take the tests, and their children have been kicked out of school. Uh, and some teachers are saying, oh, we don't want to do it, and others are saying it's harmless. It's a, it's a really uh, an inflammatory issue. Thank you. And uh, I, I'm just thankful for homeschool. That's right. Homeschooling is the move for the present and the future. Thank you for your call, and we'll move on to the next person. I hope you'll get back to us with uh, follow-up. I would like Will to you? send you faxes of these documents. Please do. Very good. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good night. All right, the next call. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, Carolyn. Sherry from South Dakota. Hello, Sherry. I um, uh, breakfast with a couple senators the other day, and they are going to be doing a, a taking a vote on federal control of all utilities, not only here in South Dakota, but they said it's going to go nationwide. That is a stunner, isn't it? Yeah, but it's going to be this legislative uh, time, and I guess within a couple of weeks they'll be voting on it. And the crime bill, I think, is going to be voted on, too, by the end of February? Um, I think the They didn't say anything about that. They just said that it was pretty much already intact because um, if they vote no, then they're going to threaten them with withholding funds. If they vote no on, be clear to the listeners, vote no on what? Um, on uh, complete federal control of, of all the utilities, and that's the, the urban, you know, the rural areas. Well, this sounds like something that the people could get together and stop and think about um, what it means to sacrifice or to go without or to do with less in order to uphold your constitution and your rights and not live by federal funds at all times. Well, one of the senators said um, if it goes through, which it probably will, he said uh, we will then become the United Socialist States of America completely. And this is something we have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Thank you for calling, Sherry. Yeah, I mean, uh, one other thing, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be sending you half of my ties. I can't afford to buy the Gannett stock, but maybe that'll help. And maybe some others will think about doing that, too. We'll talk about it later. Thank you, Sherry. Okay. Good night to everyone around the world. I hope you've listened carefully to the programs at 6 p.m. tonight and 10 p.m. Mountain Time. It's serious the problems that we're dealing with. Good night.